from Pop Quilt Shop Studio. Today we're going to learn how to do Kwandi. Now that is a quilting technique from India. It actually was brought to India from Africa approximately about a thousand years ago, more, I don't know, less than a thousand. And it's a technique that is used with the folded over of the edge of the fabric. So they have it in layers. They usually use leftover saris or uh, wadding or cottons. I have um, flannel here that I'm going to use as my inside piece. You don't have to have it. Actually, you could use a couple pieces of flannel and you should be good to go. It, this really takes care of all your little scrappy bits that you've been keeping and you just don't know what to do with. This is a great way to use those scrap bits and crumbs and everything else to for this kind of project. Make it big, make it small. Uh, of course, the bigger you make it, the bigger the pieces that I think you would want to be able to, to use with this. It is a great way to use these pearl cotton flosses or embroidery flosses. They're, some of them have some um, obviously variegated colors and beautiful, beautiful vibrant colors that go on in there. And there's a couple of different styles. One's got a little bit of a, a rib to it and then there's the straight ones which is normally used for cross stitching. So you can use these just out of hole and then you can use a nice big uh, needle with sharp long needle with a big eye to be able to fit that thread through. You could also use a thicker hand need uh, thread from uh, for hand, hand stitching or uh, end in the machine. So I'll show you how to do um, the hand and the machine. I plan on doing the scarf uh, by hand completely, but I'll show you a little example on the machine how to do it. So uh, let's get started. So I also have some wax and that's only to help uh, aid you in if you're running into knots as you're going through your fabric and stuff like that, is you just run it quickly just through there and that will help things go smoothly through your fabrics. Like sometimes you got some really thick things there, so have something to either push the, the needle down onto so you can put it there without marking your table or anything like that, or have a really good thimble to be able to push back up into, okay? So I've actually learned a few things. So I'll show you a couple things that I've learned first is uh, when you start off with your um, your project, your your uh, quanti, the uh, most important piece is these outside uh, squares. They are squares, but then they're folded corner to corner, just like that. So it's like a prairie point, right? And they go in first. So you start with your folded edge. You're going to fold over a half inch. That seems to be customary without this, uh, this so I've read so far. Um, and then half inch on the side. So everything's folded in. There's no raw edges involved in this project. So you start with the folded over and folded over. You take your fula. This is what this is called. And that goes in the corner. Now what I was doing was just putting a little clip there so I could hold it till I get my, my next piece ready. Um, so of course I'm just grabbing from my pile. I got all sorts of bits and bobs here. If you come across things that are not square uh, and you got at least a uh, 90 degree angle here, you can take that and fold it up on itself and then be able just to trim out and then you got yourself a nice square at least. But you can even kind of lap off a little bit to, to give yourself some, some half decent, like even right here. We, we, it doesn't have to be exact. But we can take that and we can take that and then use that piece. And of course that could be used somewhere else, right? I've even seen where pieces have been folded right on top to catch the little end bits and they're, they're just covering all over. Now to start off, you want a two folded edges. So you're going to have a folded edge up against this side and a folded edge against this side. Depending on if you're left-handed or right-handed, um, whether and whether you want to start with the machine or not. So, but I'm going to, I'll show you how we'll do it over here. Okay. What I should have done after stitching across is I should have come back, but that's okay. I, I, it was a learning. So you're going to come and lay it up in the corner and then you're going to start. That's going to be thick right there in that spot there with the, the fula in the corner. And you're going to tie, you're going to come in with your needle underneath just a little bit to tie yourself that, that little knot and then you're going to stitch across and then you're going to lay the next piece so the folded edge and the folded edge is at the top, folded edge is at the side and then you're just going to keep on stitching. See I'm just going to come back up in here with this one because I've got this big pile of thread to use from cross stitch projects galore. I'm going to use it on my beautiful scarf so it is going to be so colorful. 
and then I'm going to come down in. You want to make sure you're coming down securing the stitch into the next piece. So you want to make sure you're coming up just right past that little fold part for the first one and then coming straight down into the second. Oops, I pulled right out of the eye of the needle. Okay. And it's customary for the stitch to be bigger on the back than it is on the front. So this is where you can kind of rock your needle twice depending on the piece you've got going on. Okay, hold on, I gotta re-thread my needle here. This could take a moment. <laughs> Maybe. Did I get it? Whoa, hold it. All right. <laughs> now the old thread from the orange, I'm just gonna tuck under because it's just gonna get, I did tie it off at the end. Here. And then up. So we've secured it. Oops, we got our little fool end away. Oh no. Right. And a folded edge, making sure there's no raw edges. And now it's a little on the top and then bigger on the bottom. So this is where you can go like down, up, scoot just a smidge with your needle, down again, and then back up. And then you pull that through. Now this is very a hand labor uh, intensive project for sure. And even, even with me, and I'm 52, I got arthritis in my little joint there and here and here and here and here and everywhere and bitty bobs and a creak and a crack. So um, I will take my time doing my, my scarf for sure. I'm not gonna, not gonna rush it, but if you wanna be, the, the wanna have it so it's, it's sooner, you couldn't certainly do it by machine. Okay. I'll show you that. So that's how you keep going around, and you're going to go around the outside completely first, okay? And then when it comes to the second row, because um, you're going to work your same way back and around again, when it comes to the shorter pieces like this one here, okay? It, would, it was laying like that, and you're like, okay, well, how do you go for the next row? So it says to, to put fold this row raw edge under and then slip this underneath and I'm going to make sure it goes past this one here and then I'm going to roll this edge sorry about that roll this edge to there and then when I come back to do the hand stitching across this way I'm catching the top of this one in here you want to leave approximately a thumb width distance between your spacing of your stitching as you're going all the way around okay and you can come up with some very beautiful beautiful projects I did this one too as I when I learned that uh, the fulos went the, the other way one for the arrow the triangles instead of the squares and I was like, uh-oh, I came too close to here. So how do I get that folded edge under? So no, if you came across that, it's not the end of the world. Really, it's not. You can just fold your edge there, fold your edge there, put that down over on top, and you just have to do another stitch like right beside it. So to secure it, okay? But it's not the end of the world. And when it comes to the, the part of um, even there's going to be spaces where you're like, I can't get anything under there, you can just lay right on top. Okay. Just make sure you're, whichever way you're going, to stack the next piece that it's a, a folded edge, folded edge. Right? There's no raw edges in this. There actually is another uh, technique very similar to this um, called cantha, and it is also done uh, in parallel, similar fashion, but parallel lines in the stitching, uh, and it's all raw edge. There's you just stack right on top and keep on stitching. So. Here, I'll show you again how to add another piece. So we're just going to rock this on the top, a little on the top, a little on the bottom, and to give ourselves some space to add that folded edge for the overlap from one piece to the next. So here we go, a little press. You could use your iron. Uh, and this to me is you, you can, whatever makes you happy. Uh, if, if you, um, for machining, I definitely would be uh, pressing. So I've come up on this, the back part and I want to make sure I'm coming down here to secure. And then I know that with the next stitch I'm still going to be able within that half inch line of seam allowance be able to catch it all. Okay. 
Now I am using all the threads when it comes to the embroidery floss. I'm using all six of them. Um, but it depends on your needle. I would use at least four uh, if you wanted to um, just use just a, a, few, a few of the strips or, or pieces. Okay. Okay, and then the next. And you just keep adding. And then when it comes to the corner here, because that's really tiny, what I probably could have done was fold it a little bit better. And then here on top of each other and then you put your little fula in the corner and then stitch right through. Okay. So let's go a little right up in there and then just stitch right through. Okay. And you want to go like a couple times at least up one, down one, up one, down one and then you can keep on going on the around around the track as they say. Go round first and then work your way in. It's working your way from the outside of the, the project into the center to the tiny square. So you're always getting the big work done first. You're always whatever is going to take you around the outside is so much easier coming in for the next rounds. Okay, So that's what uh, doing it by hand is going to look like and I'll show you my little project here that I've got already laid out. So I have some uh, just some white uh, cotton for the back here and then I've got some leftover mint green uh, flannel and you can see I've got some bits and bobs here just layered and I've got my edges folded here and I'm just going to hand stitch using all my beautiful colored threads to work my way around and this is just a scarf for me to wear. Why not? Got to use your scraps and fabrics, okay? So let me show you how to do it by machine, okay? And here's my example that I had, um, that I tried, and I should have pressed a little bit better and folded my edges a little better. So when it comes to the machining part of it, definitely give yourself a better um, option on the edges there, okay? So here, let's go over here. Let's move this one out of the way. No confusion. And it's the same way, you start off the same way, you're going to fold your fabric half an inch under to get those raw edges. You're going to start off with a piece that's got two folded edges. And you also need yourself a little triangle for the, uh, the corner. Okay, it doesn't matter, big or small, let's do a big one, why not? I'm not, sh I don't uh, know the actual purpose of the Fula, besides it looks really awesome and I like it. And you just kind of tuck that in there. I'm sure it's, uh, maybe it's for shaking, shaking all the dust off or something. Right. Okay, and then just putting a little clip just to hold it so I can get possibly my next piece in order and line it up. Remember the folded edge here and folded edge at the side and the one at the top. Okay, and then you can do the next piece. And then just keep on filling up the whole space. Now I did, ha I do have a thicker uh, thread in my sh machine. It's a Guterman. It's a hand stitch thread, uh, and I also moved my stitch up to a 5.0. Okay, so if you wanted to wait to put the fulas in last, then just start a little bit uh, ahead, and then keep going, and then end beforehand, and then you can add your fulas in. Uh, but it is traditional to, for them to go in first. It's like a prayer. You every time you add a piece, you say a prayer for someone, or you you are praying. You're you're just praying in general. So, go back stitch just to let make sure it's really in there secure. And like I said, I'm using a really big stitch on this. I'm using the 5.0 as big as it, it goes on my machine. And I'm just tucking on down, and I'm trying to make sure I should have left it back. I should go up because. I didn't give myself enough room okay, to be able to put the next piece in. So that's really the, the troublesome part. Not troublesome, but the, the makes the habit part you have to get into is making sure that you are allowing yourself enough room before you come to the end of that fabric to add that second piece or the next piece, sorry, not second piece. Okay, so get a couple of stitches in, especially if you're working with small pieces. Um, but I could see getting a big project done in no time flat. Um, you could use uh, any sort of scrap fabric. This is a great way to use up denim, uh, maybe some uh, corduroy. 
a bit of a maybe a, a cam a, not a thick canvas but you know like a, a bit of a thicker canvas you could use that you don't even have to use the the wadding or the batting in between and most of the waddings or battings that I have seen have been fabric based not necessarily like as in a cotton or a poly so hold on let's grab some more pieces here okay, got some music we love the music around here don't we don't we don't we all right let's fold that one foot up okay, we want to make sure we're folding over here that half an inch like it's not rocket science but you know we do want to try and do the best that we can um, and then let's find a piece that we can probably get to fit within that whole gap. Now see there's a little bit of a, a, a chopped chunk out of there. That's okay. We're just going to fold that. Nobody's ever going to see that. Okay, and then we'll go this side because this seems to be the longer side because then we can make sure we're spacing that. Uh, hopefully exact. Let's lift our foot. Slip our bit under there. Lower it. Take a couple of stitches. And then reset ourselves up on this end so that we are happy with what's going on and grab our fula. A little bit more. Okay, now got this lovely black and white one. You just fold it like that. So you have a square. And you go corner to corner, and then corner to corner, just like a prairie point. There's, there's a prairie point right there. Perfect. There's no raw edges on either of them, except for the top part. Okay. No, that goes slips right in between. And then we're going to come right across and do a back stitch right on top of it to make sure it's nice and secure. Stitches. Of course, this is a small project, but you can see what we've got trying to go on here. Fold that little finger press. And just think about all the cool little things you could make with it. Like I said, mug rugs and sides of totes, and even like uh, the the one I made um, for this one right here that I was learning on. That's going to go under Soapy's bowl out here in the shop. So that's going to be her little placemat. We, the, her, our last uh, big scrappy project went to the, the little placemat. I was making it for her. So. And it's still used today. What was it? Years and years and years ago. Okay, so there's that's a little bit shy. So I think I'm going to just grab another piece that's going to be just big enough to fit that little section there, okay? Because I don't want to force it to have so much under that I'm going to end up with a really short blanket at that point. Okay, so find another more appropriate size piece that'll fit in there. Okay, Ooh, I think I think we might have found it. So we'll fold that edge there, fold that edge there, and fold that edge there because we want it on three sides at that time. So we need to cover this side. And this side. This is where I said the pressing would definitely be helpful when it comes to the, because you can hand maneuver it all you like when it's on your lap. a little closer and then we'll take it like I said I don't think it really matters what size the fula needs to be I, I tried to find that information and I really couldn't so, she's used to like um, you know a couple couple inches by a couple inches that's a small one we could put that in there because we're just learning here pop that right in the corner And then because we have the nice fold edge on this edge too, let's keep on trucking.
I end up just covering the whole project. And as you get to the center, you have just like a little bit of strip. You can just put like one gap of fabric over the whole thing, just folded the edges under, and you are done. So it makes a very quick project too. Okay, so um, I'm going to keep plugging away at my scarf. So hopefully uh, I will get it in time uh, for the end of the video edit. <laughs> and. Uh, Thank you for joining me today and learning something new and educating ourselves on a different culture and how they quilt. Um, yeah, I really, I'm happy to, to learn this. Uh, the reason why it actually kind of came up was with uh, my adventure with Pop in October of 2023. Went uh, back to with it, with him to for his uh, co-workers and meeting them and their different cultures and learning what we could connect on as people. So this was definitely one of them. So I read up on it and... Uh, I found it very interesting. So here we are doing a little project using our scraps and crumbs to make something beautiful. So thank you everybody. Take care. Big hugs and we'll see you soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, hit the bell. Don't want to miss something around here. We've got some crazy stuff going on. You hungry yet? Are you? Are you hungry? I just craving for pizza. I wonder why. See ya. <laughs>